Recent surveys have shown that nearly a third of personal support workers are undecided about getting the vaccine. Now, those workers play a critical role in long-term care homes, so combating vaccine hesitancy among these workers will be key to getting outbreaks in these facilities under control. Dr. Kushana Sankar joins us now. She's a biologist, scientist, and science communication lead for COVID-19 Resources Canada. Dr. Sankar, this is really concerning that we have so much vaccine hesitancy among personal support workers. Is it misinformation that is leading to these high numbers? Yes, Dwight, that's a great um, insight. So misinformation is part of why uh, we have hesitancy around the vaccines right now. Um, but also, we've been noticing uh, in some of these nightly Zoom sessions that myself and another scientist, Dr. Tara Moriarty, have been leading is the inaccessibility of current information around vaccines. Um, because of that, a lot of the uh, personal support workers and healthcare workers at the long term uh, long-term care homes are actually seeking other forms of information and coming across mis misinformation. Um, but we also have to remember, too, about historical mistreatment of racialized and vulnerable communities that plays a part um, in this hesitancy around getting the vaccine. You mentioned the Zoom sessions, so you're directly helping to fight this holding Zoom sessions with these personal support workers. How did that come about? Yes, great question. So Dr. Tara Moriarty has a mom in long-term care homes, and she was receiving a lot of information and messages from fellow healthcare professionals that uh, the staff at the long-term care homes were actually quite hesitant about getting the vaccines. And now we know it's extremely important that everyone within the long-term care homes, um, especially being priority right now, are able to take the vaccines that they, are, uh, they, they have access to. And so one of the ways in which we thought as independent scientists that we can fight this is by holding nightly uh, discussion sessions uh, for specifically for long-term care workers and the family members. And so that's the main reason why we started these nightly Zoom call sessions. What are you hearing from these workers? And um, tell us some of the types of questions that you're getting. Sure. So some of the questions we're getting um, are actually around the safety and the efficacy of the vaccine. Some people are quite um, quite concerned about how fast the vaccines have been developed. Um, so that's one of the concerns that we're getting, whether these vaccines are safe or not because of their speedy development. Um, the second question we're actually getting is around uh, the mRNA technology and whether or not the mRNA can alter our DNA. And we know that to be false. Uh, as scientists, we know that uh, the mRNA actually has no access to the DNA and cannot alter our DNA. And then the last uh, one of the other top three questions that we do receive is around uh, infertility in the vaccine. So a lot of uh, women who join our calls are constantly asking us about female in infertility and the vaccine. However, there's no data to show that these vaccines affect uh, fertility. I've been hearing about this RNA DNA debate on some of the WhatsApp uh, things people are sending me. I've had to block a few people for this kind of misinformation. Tell us about the response you've been getting from these Zoom interviews. Are people saying, OK, maybe I will take this vaccine after getting some information from scientists like you? Yeah, so, so far the um, the feedback has been phenomenal. And I think one of the reasons for that is because of the type of environment that we try to create on these calls. Uh, one of the things that we think is really important is that people do not feel judged when they're in the call. So it's a safe space and a non-judgmental zone. So people are able to come with all their concerns and ask their questions. Um, we do hear that people are uh, also engaged in these WhatsApp groups and, and a lot of the spread of misinformation is actually coming uh, between friends and colleagues and family members specifically. So on these calls, we try to address uh, each person's concerns as well as validate their concerns around the vaccine. It is new. Um, and so there is obviously people will have questions about it. Um, but we do, like I say, uh, create a safe space so that people are they feel comfortable to come in and ask us uh, their honest questions. Dr. Sankar, let's finish with this. From your vantage point, what advice would you give to public health officials so they can be better prepared to get these hesitant frontline workers on board and get them vaccinated? 
So another excellent question. I think one of the most important things we need to do is actually get the information that is actually currently available uh, to the people who need them and get them to the people in a way that they can access the information. So there's a lot of information around vaccine safety that is around. However, what we found is that they're either not packaged correctly and targeted to the specific communities and demographics that we need to target them to. So for example, one way in which we can do this is having more messaging around, having the message be specifically targeted to the different populations, whether they be more underserved populations and racialized communities, and getting the message out there to the people who need the information, instead of having the information sim simply live on a website, for example. And I think by doing this, we would be able to um, reach more people and, and be able to um, deal with their fears and concerns, and there would be less hesitancy around getting the vaccine. Yeah, and your Zoom sessions are helping with that. Dr. Kushana Sankar is a biologist, scientist, and science communication lead for COVID-19 Resources Canada. Thank you for this information, Dr. Sankar. Thank you.